Beat Depression UK show on Liberty Radio. Beating depression through the power of faith. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Beat Depression UK radio program. So today we are going to be speaking about the effects on a person's mental health due to mental abuse and I'm today I'm going to be going through the signs of you know what actually happens when someone is being mentally abused because believe it or not some people don't actually realize that it's happening they know something's not right because they're not feeling good about themselves they're not ha very happy in the relationship but they don't actually realize that it's mental abuse. So our real life story today is going to illustrate some of the things, some of the points when this is actually happening. And it's a video testimony today. So pay close attention to what uh, this lady says, Shola. And we're gonna come back and discuss some of the points that she mentioned. Because when a relationship isn't going right, and especially where abuse is involved, of course it does affect your mental health. You know, even if there isn't abuse and things aren't going, you know, the way they should be, you're not happy for some reason in a relationship, it affects your mental health as well. So, you know, you can't really separate the two. If you have a bad relationship, it's going to affect your mental health in some way. So let's take a look at this story and then we'll come back and talk about it. My name is Shola Aguilefo and I beat depression through the power of faith. I started to develop uh, mental health issues, um, depression, because I was in a relationship. The person started to change, so they stopped like taking care of them. I would try to speak to him, but he would sometimes give me the silent treatment. He wouldn't listen to what I would say, and sometimes he would just make me feel like I'm the one that's crazy. He would say those kind of comments to me, and he just wouldn't listen to what I had to say. So. I just felt very like depressed, I felt very low. He would do things where I would come home and I find that things would be missing. Things would just be missing, things that maybe I've bought like in the house and I'll be looking for it and I couldn't find it and then he would just say that he's either chucked them out. So this used to be, it just used to make me feel on edge, like I never really knew like where I stood with him and it, I just felt at some point that I'm going, I'm literally going crazy because of the things that he would do, because he wouldn't, he wouldn't put his hand on me, but it would be psychologically like abusing me. Just the psychological, the things he would say and do, it just wouldn't make any sense. So I would just be like, if anybody will ask me, are you okay? I'll just put on like a front. I would just say, yeah, I'm fine. But inside I was literally dying inside because I never come across this before. I've never been in this situation in a relationship like this before. So it really did affect me. In the beginning, it didn't start off like that. The relationship wasn't like that. It was not, it was a good relationship, but it was towards the last, I would say, three, four years of the relationship. That's when he really changed. That's when he really, really changed. Living with mental health issues, it made me feel I would experience like suicidal thoughts. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't act on it. I just felt so like low, like I just felt like I was in a prison. I couldn't really, even if I tried to express to like family, friends, what I was going through, they wouldn't understand. It'd be something really hard to like explain. You just couldn't really explain it to anyone. Just felt like alone, like, just like really low. I felt very alone inside. I felt, I felt isolated. I just felt like I couldn't really express how I was feeling because people would see me and I look fine on the outside, but it wouldn't match up. I would look fine on the outside, so they wouldn't understand really what I'm going through. My worst moment was one day when my partner came home and he, I can't remember what he'd done, but he did something and it just made me so angry to the point like I almost like pulled him like to get out of the way and then I realized that this is not me this is not who I am I started to realize that it's changing me 
as a per as a person and I didn't you know I didn't like what I was seeing I didn't like the change that I was seeing in myself what I did to try to recover I tried to speak to my partner but I realized that it wasn't getting anywhere I involved his family they tried their best to help him but he just he just couldn't see it so at the time I was attending the help center and I started to learn how to value myself and not to accept the situation for what it was. So I just kept on coming and little by little, I started to get stronger. I started to like speak life to myself, encourage myself that, you know, I don't have to accept it. You know, my, I'm not born to suffer, that I can, I didn't know how I was gonna come through it, but I just had that assurance that somehow that it will be okay. My life changed, it didn't change overnight, but as I started to come to the help centre, that's when I started to see the change, like, bit by bit. I remember I said to God, I said, God, either you change my partner or you remove him because I can't suffer like this anymore and I, I don't believe that I'm, I was born to suffer. A couple of weeks, we had not we had a, a, like, I just told him that I can't do this anymore. That, you know, and at the time, my grandma wasn't well. She actually passed, but I remember saying, I can't do this anymore, that I, I'm not born to suffer. And I remember that day, he just left. I didn't know he was leaving, but he just left, left his things and just left. And I didn't come across, I didn't um, have any relationship with him after that, he just left. Today I am happy, I'm not depressed anymore. I um, actually got married, got married now, it's been coming up to the fourth year now, so I'm happily married now. So I'm, I'm a different person, I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept what I did back then. I'm, I'm more positive, you know, I know how to overcome like issues. I know how with God that I can overcome. So I'm a completely different person, I'm happy, happily married. My advice to someone that's suffering from mental health is not to give up and don't keep quiet about it. Speak to someone. I, like I, I was attending the help centre, so I was able to speak to the advisors there, speak to the pastor. So don't, don't keep it in. Um, just believe that you can overcome it. You know, your life can change just like mine did. So oh, thank you very much to Shola for st sharing her story there and actually just seeing her today happily married, moving on from that abusive relationship and meeting someone else is so good to see. But you know what, she had to work on herself first because the, the issue is even if you leave a relationship that's mentally abusive or physically abusive and you don't work on yourself you know, to ask kind of questions, you know, why, why did I stay in that relationship? Why did I accept to be treated that way? And you don't allow certain changes to happen within you, then l the likelihood is that you will attract someone else like that as well. And then there are many people that are in this cycle of relationship after relationship. They keep getting abused. They keep um, accepting be to be treated in, in a wrong way. So they, they need to work on themselves. That transformation needs to happen inside the person. So as you can see now, Shola is happily married. She, she's not experienced any abuse, but why? Because the transformation happened inside of her first. And then she was able to move on and, and meet someone new and have a healthy relationship. But let's take a look now at some, some slides. Wanted to first actually, I, I mean, most of you would know what mental abuse is, but just for sake of argument, let's just go through what mental abuse is. So it's a form of manipulation and control meant to undermine your self-esteem and make you feel worse about yourself, okay? And actually the effects of uh, mental abuse can be just as detrimental as physical abuse, okay? So now let's see some of the signs. So maybe you are in a relationship you're not happy with and you're not really sure what's going on. You don't know where you stand. But let's take a look at some of the signs and see if you can identify with any of these. So the first one, the first sign is accusation and blame. 
So perhaps your partner is actually blaming all of their problems on you. So if anything goes wrong in their life, if something happens, it's your fault for some reason. They seem to come up with some kind of justification. It's never their fault. It's always something to do with you. Uh, and they always end up accusing you of doing everything wrong. So even though you, you might try to speak to this person and explain, look, it's not like this or anything, the person just does not want to hear what, what you have to say. And they will just basically not take any responsibility. Nothing's ever their fault. Everything is on you. That's impossible. <laughs> you know, normally when there are problems and when, the, you know, both, both parties have something to do with it, have some kind of contribution to that issue. Or at least, you know, the other partner, if one partner did cause something, the other one will step in and support the person, not throw it in their face. So that's not healthy, right? So one one or the other, it's, you know, there's, there's a big sign there. Maybe the person is jealous of you. They're all jealous. They're all, all the time, they're, 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 you know, asking you questions. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Who have you been with? Okay, it's, not, it's, it's okay to show a healthy interest. You know, where, what, what did you get up to today, babe? But when it crosses the line of, you know, being accusing, there's something not quite right there. The next point, control. This is another sign, control. So the person tries to control everything. So it could be big things like, for example, where you're going to live, where you're going to work. It could even be small things like, some th the things that you eat, for example, oh, they, they start to try to control the way you eat or what you watch. Now, don't get this confused with concern. All right. So maybe, you know, your partner, you know, mentions to you, look, you know, you haven't been eating too healthily lately. I'm a bit worried about your health or you've not been exercising. There's a healthy concern about your partner because, you know, you, you, you're saying something or trying to point out for their own good because you don't want to see them, you know, end up with health problems or getting sick in the future or having in any injuries. So that's a healthy concern. So don't say now, you know, because my partner says something about my food that he's been abusive. No, or she's been abusive. Not that, right? They're showing a healthy concern. It's what, you know, husband and wife do, for example. But if the person is, is not concerned, they're really just trying to, to control everything that you do, there's something not right there. OK, the next point is codependency. So, for example, they may try to create situations where it's like you feel like you have no other choice but to be with them only. So they might use, uh, what's the word? I've forgotten the word. You know, when they try to make you feel guilty about something, about not being with them because maybe they're going through a bad day. But this bad day just seems to be all the time. They just need you there all the time. And, and you find yourself um, not having relationships with anyone else. So you don't have any friends anymore. You don't contact family anymore. You hardly go out. This person wants you next to them the whole time and they make you feel bad if you're not there. That's not healthy. That is a sign of mental abuse, okay? And criticism, let's look at the next one, criticism. This person may be criticizes you for everything that you do so there is nothing good enough you don't do anything right according to them you're always messing up according to them so they instead of um encouraging you instead of cheering you on like any partner should they're constantly putting you down and again don't get this confused with trying to you know help your partner improve in certain things because you know when when you are living together for example you see your partner's mistakes and and out of love and wanting to see them get better and develop and grow you may say so why don't you try this why don't you try that why don't you do things this way what about so you give suggestions but that's try that's in a way to try to help them but if the person criticizes you all the time and says things like oh you're so dumb you're never going to be able to do this and why don't you just give up that, that's a big no-no. And also making fun of you in front of people. We all like to have a bit of a laugh, a joke sometimes, but you shouldn't be doing that, you know, putting your, 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 your spouse, your partner down in front of other people, making them feel small, making them feel stupid, or, or telling everyone something that that person might have told you in confidence, or private things about your relationship that shouldn't be, you know, out for anyone else to hear. 
So, you know, if the person's doing that in front of people, that is also a big no-no. And also, um, you know, maybe when you have achieved something, actually downplaying that achievement, saying, oh, that was, oh anyone could have done that. Anyone could have, could have done what you did. What's the big deal? What are you making such a fuss for? And there you are excited about having achieved something and then your partner there is just not acknowledging. All right. Uh, we also have humiliation. Do we have humiliation there? Oh, no. That's, do we have, oh, yeah, humiliation. Okay. So, again, like I said, this, this kind of ties into the other point where they make fun of you and encourage others to laugh at you, but also posting compromising pictures or posts on social media. That is an awful thing to do. You know, when you are with someone, especially when you're married to them, the, you... There, there is a, a trust there. Things, you know, things that happen between the two of you, things that you share is meant to stay between the two of you. But if you find your private life out on social media or, or maybe a, a photo that, you know, you wouldn't, maybe you took for yourself or the two of you and you maybe don't look great in that picture, but your partner purposely goes and posts that picture because he or she knows that you don't like yourself in that picture, but they post it that's a big no-no all right so there, there are many many signs there so you know if if you are you know facing any of that have have a look okay maybe it's not you say oh you know but most of the time the, the relationship's good I don't have any any issues it's just every now and then but you really have to see is it really every now and then are you actually happy in this relationship is it affecting your mental health Shola was having suicidal thoughts because of what she was going through in her relationship. And she didn't cover half the things that we've just spoken about. So, you know, if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling agitated, if you're feeling anxious when you're around your partner, if you're feeling panicky, if you feel like you're having to tread on eggshells, if you're having to kind of think before you speak, there's something wrong there. That's not normal because a, he a normal, healthy relationship is lovely to be in. You know, for example, in my case, I look forward to being with my husband. We talk, we laugh, we encourage each other. We, okay, we have our jokes between the two of us, but we know we're just joking. We look, you know, we look forward to spending time. I can't wait to go home and spend time with him and the same for him as well. That's a healthy relationship. So if you don't feel like that about your relationship, there's something very wrong if it's making you, you know, your, your mental health issues worse, for example. Your, your, like I said, I, get, I just gave you a list. There's something wrong you need to see. And if, you th if you've realized after you've watched Shola's story and some of the things that I've spoken about, if, if you see that, you know, for example, if you're in, in any immediate danger, of course you need to, to call 911. You need to call the police if there's any immediate danger. But if there's not any immediate danger and you... And you decide now, you know, I'm not going to, I don't want to, I don't want this relationship anymore. It's, it's, it's too much for me. And also I have to say, you know, people can change because, you know, people have come to our church. They have been this kind of person that I've just described. And, but they are humble enough to say, look, I have a problem. You know, I, I went through problems as a child or went through difficulties. I know I'm like this. I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to change. That person can get help and we have had many cases of people that have completely changed the way they are. However, if your partner does not want to change, says, you know, everything is your fault, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm not willing to work on anything, you need to accept me as I am, then that's the cue for you that this person, you know, is not, is not a good person to be with. And then you need to then, you know, consider you probably have already considered leaving that relationship for your own mental health, for the good of your own mental health, because it will end up, it's, it's not going to get better. Like I said, unless this person is willing to get help, it's not going to get better. It's only going to get worse because when the more that you accept, the more abuse that you accept, the more is going to come your way. So as in, as in Shola's case, very, very important, you know, that, you know, she, she, all right, she, she, wait, she said a prayer actually for this person, if it's not the one for her to be removed. Now, I'm not saying you should do that because to be honest, the, all the signs were already there that this relationship wasn't for her, but that was her faith. She, she, she said that prayer and actually he was removed. He, he was, he was the one that walked out. 
but you know if he hadn't walked out then she she would have she knew the signs already she learned that you know when she was coming to the church she learned that this is not a good relationship she would have walked away but the next step is before you even consider another relationship you need to help yourself first work on any issues if you have mental health issues already you have depression anxiety all those things get help for those things first put yourself first because if you go into another relationship even if that partner is is good even if they're not abusive but you could end up you know putting stress and strain on that relationship because you haven't dealt with your mental health issues and I know that because, you know, when I had my mental health issues, I put, on, I put so much stress on the relationship because I wasn't okay inside. As soon as I got help for what was on the inside, everything changed in my relationship as well. So work on yourself, get your priorities right, and then you can think about a relationship. So if you want help, if you have or are in an abusive relationship, you want to talk to someone, if you have come out of a relationship and you are dealing with the after effects, you know, you have low confidence, you're you're have anxiety any form of help that you need we are here for you you can give us a call on 020 7686 6000 okay you can also email us on beat depression uk at uckg.org we have centers based all over london and some outside london as well and we are happy to put you in touch with our beat depression uk representative in that branch to to help you to speak to you but anything you need we are here to help you because we really do believe and have proof of transformations of life all right guys so that's it for today and we'll see you again on our next program the beach depression uk show on liberty radio 